The purpose of this video is to talk very briefly about some of the most basic elements of reporting your qualitative and quantitative data once you've collected it. Okay, so we've previously established that qualitative data has the root word quality, which is data that's descriptive, harder to put into numbers. Quantitative data, which has the root word quantity, is numerical information that you can easily put into a chart or a table or a graph. Um, so if we are thinking about some of the results that we're going to get when we have quantitative data, we might see a number of things depending on what platform we use to gather the data, um, whether we're creating this manually um, or if it's already been aggregated and reported for us, we might see something like a pie chart, which tells us percentages of all of the responses that we got for our survey. This number or this percentage of responses answered, you know, the color connection here, blue, curious, but not sure I'll participate. Uh, this lesser percent of people answered next, and then there was a split between the final two answers. So we can calculate um, exactly how many respondents, or we can leave that as a percentage. So if we have 10 responses, we know 10 people answered this question. 50% of them said they're curious, but they're, they're not sure they'll participate. That means five of our 10 responses, um, five people said this. So if we need to know exactly how many people and not just a percentage, we can do the math backwards and find that information. So you might see something like this when you need to report your quantitative results, okay? Another thing that you might see, depending on the types of questions that you ask, you might see something more like a graph um, a bar graph specifically, and that might give you some a different type of information. Still, we see a per percentage with a bar graph, um, but we also know that if we added all of these percentages up, they're not going to equal 100 because responders in this particular question, they could have selected multiple answers. So someone who uh, selected MLA project final paper might have also selected APA project handout. Um, so this tells us some additional information, like exactly how many people selected. Of course, we could always work that math backwards, but it's giving us that information. Um, and it's just kind of showing maybe what was the most popular choice? If people could answer multiple times and select something, we can see based on the bars what the most popular choice was. All right, um, so what do we do with this information? We have to report it as part of the goals of the results section of our APA project. So let's talk a little bit again about the very basics of reporting quantitative number-based data. You always wanna stay objective when you are reporting the immediate results. You don't wanna in make interpretations yet. You don't want to make any arguments or suggestions. You don't even necessarily want to put any words into your survey respondents' mouths that weren't expressly stated in the survey. For example, if we go back to this slide, we notice that 10% um, of our survey respondents mentioned that they felt somewhere between curious but not sure and absolutely sure. <laughs> they're not sure, they're absolutely sure, they're curious. Well, we don't really know why, so I wouldn't want to report the results here and say, oh, well, maybe they thought they didn't know what to do. Um, maybe they don't like peer review. Maybe they didn't know if it would be helpful. We don't want to say anything uh, that's not going to be true based on the information we have from our survey. That's why having good survey questions is important. Okay, so we want to stay as objective as possible. We don't want to put words into the mouths of the people who filled in our surveys, um, and we don't want to interpret yet. We will get to that phase, but just not yet. Um, if questions relate, group that information just so that you can kind of keep 
similar topics next to each other as you're reporting those results. Um, you want to report numbers numerically. What I mean by that is if you have a number, type the number. Don't type the word of the number like 9, N-I-N-E. Don't do that. Just push number 9 on your keypad as you're reporting those numbers. Um, also, explain the question so the numbers make sense in context. Let's take a look at an example to understand that last bullet point the best. Um, the first part of this first sentence is me trying to make sure that when my reader reads my survey results, they understand the context of this 30%. So I wrote, when asked how interested they were to participate in peer review, I'm just explaining what the question was essentially. 30% of respondents said they would definitely participate, while 50% said they were curious but weren't sure they would participate. Okay, so here we have all of these things. I'm trying to remain objective. I'm not trying to explain anything that doesn't exist explicitly in my survey results. Um, I'm noticing that the answers were to the same question, so I'm making sure that I group that information together. I've written the numbers out in number form, and again, we've explained so it makes sense. Here's another example. 90% of respondents who were interested in peer review noted that they wanted to peer review their final MLA paper. Okay, so again, um, nothing like they were most excited to peer review their final paper. We don't know how excited they are. I just know that if I look at that previous slide, 90% of people who answered this question said, I would maybe be interested in participating in peer review for the final paper. Okay. Okay, so those are, again, some really basic things in reporting your quantitative information or results that you've received from your survey. Let's take a look at what you will probably see when you look at your qualitative data results. Okay, so you're not going to see pie charts, bar graphs. You're going to see the written content that your survey respondents provided for you. You're going to do more reading in this um, part of the reporting than you will do in the quantitative section, okay? So this is what it might look like. A lot of responses will be short to the point. If you design great questions, you might be able to pull more information out of your survey respondents, but most people just like to be succinct and take as little time as possible writing a survey. That can be challenging when you're reporting the results, especially in terms of reporting them objectively. So when we're talking about reporting qualitative data, we still want to remain objective. We don't want to interpret. We don't want to put words into our respondents' mouths. We want to make sure that what we're saying is as true as possible. So stay objective. Look for themes. When you notice that your responses start to overlap, maybe multiple people are saying the same thing, those are some big themes. Report these first. That Those are things that seem really important to comment on. With qualitative data, you don't necessarily have to comment on everything, um, but if a lot of people are saying similar things or the same thing, that's important. Also look for outliers. Um, if there's something that's so out there that it's hard to understand how it fits into your survey, you can add it as a footnote or you can skip reporting it. But some outliers are really interesting. You know, if almost everyone in your survey responds and says one thing in particular, but then there's one person who says the complete opposite. That I don't know what you want to do with that information, but it's certainly interesting and it might be worth reporting. So that's important as well. Um, again, make sure that you explain the question so the qualitative answers make sense in context. Make sure you quote minimally, if at all. Only quote the survey responses if you feel like you cannot paraphrase that information. Your results section should not be just a bunch of quotes after quotes after quotes. You want to report the information back and not just quote it. You can quantify qualitative data if you like, but you don't have to. So that would be the difference between saying something like 90% versus most.
It's up to you if you want to turn your qualitative responses into a math problem. Um, here's an example that we could take a look at. When asked what changes the chapter should make to its bylaws, most survey respondents commented on updating the membership and meetings sections. Okay, so this is me just taking a look at the whole survey and seeing what parts or questions of my short answers got the most results. Regarding membership, responses varied significantly. However, multiple survey respondents suggested making changes to the timing of when invitations are sent out for membership. Okay, so here I'm not going through and telling my reader every single response that I got in my qualitative section. That would just get cumbersome and difficult to manage for the reader and for myself. But I did notice that there were a lot of repetitions in one particular topic underneath the membership umbrella. So I wanted to point that out. That felt important to comment on. When suggesting changes to the meeting section of the bylaws, most survey respondents felt additional distinctions were necessary in order to differentiate chapter versus officer meetings. However, one survey respondent felt that all members should be able to be present at all meetings. Okay, so here's that situation where I found a theme. Most of the people are mentioning this one thing in particular. I've kind of paraphrased that theme, um, given it one title or topic, if you want to call it that. But I did notice an outlier. There was one person who wanted the complete opposite of that. So that felt important to comment on. I'm still trying throughout this these three sentences. I'm still trying to stay objective. I'm not trying to interpret or make any suggestions at this point when I'm reporting the results um, of my quantitative and qualitative sections. I, I just want to tell my reader, here's what I learned. Okay, so what next? Part of our results section will require you to interpret that information, sort of the final paragraph or the conclusion of your results section is an interpretation or what I call finding meaning in your survey. So if you're noticing high percentages of responses in your quantitative section, if you're noticing repeated qualitative answers and finding those themes, interpret what that means to you. It's going to require you to subjectively assess that objective information. So you are going to have to make some assumptions or some, some guesses as to what it might mean. Um, but right now we're just sort of giving a little bit of an interpretation. It's really, really easy to jump straight into making a recommendation or an argument but we wanna save all of that for our discussion section. So let's not make recommendations or arguments. Let's just make interpretations. So let's take a look at two examples. 70% of survey respondents were not definitely sure that they would participate in peer review. Some were curious, some were nervous, and some were vaguely unsure. This suggests that students have significant hesitations when it comes to peer review either because they do not feel they will be helpful in providing feedback or because they do not see the value in peer review. Okay, so here I'm saying, you know, I noticed that only 30% of the people who answered my little pie chart question about, are you interested in peer review? Only 30% of people said, I definitely want to do it. So to me, that means a large chunk of students are in some kind of way hesitant. So why might students be hesitant and thinking, well, maybe they don't think that they will get help or maybe they don't think that they will provide help. And that's just my suggestion. I have ideas on what that means, like what that can mean for my classroom and moving forward, but I'm going to hold off on making any recommendations um, or, you know, saying here's what we need to do next because of what I've learned here. I'm going to do that later. Okay, my second example says, these survey results suggest, again, here's that word, suggest, suggest that members need more information to understand the goals and objectives of the chapter as a whole. Most of the changes proposed in the survey fall under the umbrella of clarifying or explaining, which suggests that members are confused about multiple elements of the chapter and society as a whole. Okay, so what I'm doing when I'm looking at my qualitative responses here in this second survey, 
is I'm noticing, you know, okay, I noticed these themes. They made these kinds of suggestions and I'm thinking, well, what types of suggestions or changes are they? For me, they were, we need more information. We don't understand the difference between. So I'm taking a look at the answers. I've reported the answers in a previous paragraph. Now I'm saying, you know, it kind of tells me that my, the people that took this survey are confused. And that's what I want to say here. Again, I have ideas about that. Like, let's get them to a point where they're not confused. What can we do to make sure that people in this chapter of society are, are no longer confused? But I'm going to, again, hold off on presenting any kind of recommendations or arguments or plans for the future. Um, because right now, all I'm really doing in my results section is reporting the data. What is the quantitative data? Report it objectively. What is the qualitative data? Report that objectively, and then find a little bit of meaning in the survey by interpreting. Here's what this tells me about the people that took my survey, okay? We will move on to the next section later, and that will be our final section. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, start reporting your survey results. Start writing that out.